Isaiah chapter 58. We're going to read verse 1 down to 8. Y'all got it? Isaiah chapter 58. Verse 1 down to 8. The Bible said, the Lord spoke to the prophet Isaiah, said, cry aloud. Spread that. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgressions. And the house of Jacob their sins. In other words, don't hide nothing from them that I tell you to say. Yet they seek me daily. And delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they. Wherefore have we fasted, say they. And thou seest not. Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no knowledge of it, God? Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate to smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you this day to make your voice be heard on high. It's, it's such a fast, brothers and sisters, that God has chosen. It's something when God chooses. He said, is, is, there, is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Y'all had something totally different in this tonight. Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this fast that I have chosen to loose bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens? To let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke? Mm. Is it not to deal by bread to the hungry that thou bring the poor that are cast out of thy, to thy house? When thou seest the naked, thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? He said, the fast that I've chosen, this is what will happen. Then shall your light break forth as the morning. The fast I've chosen, thy help shall spring forth speedily. It's going to come fast. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. All right, so that's a reward. We reward. Amen. Y'all bear with me. I'm going to read my, I, I love this. I, I love my message Bible. I, I'm going to read verse 1 down to 5 through this. He says, shout a full throat. Shout. Hold nothing back. A trumpet blast shout. Tell my people what's wrong with their lives. Face my family, Jacob, with their sins. They're busy, busy, busy at worship and love studying all about me. To all appearances, there are a nation of right living people, law abiding to all. Look, it look good on the outside. On the outside, they look like they're my people. 
They study in their Bibles. They come in the church to worship. They love studying all about me. To all appearances, they're a nation of right living people, law abiding. To all appearances, they're a nation of right living people, law abiding, God honoring. They ask me, what's the right thing to do? And, and love having me on the side. But they also complain. Watch this. Why do we fast and you don't look our way? Why do we humble ourselves and you don't even notice? Well, here's why. The bottom line on your fast days is profit. You drive your employees too hard. You, you fast, but at the same time, you bicker and fight. You fast, but you swing a mean fist. The kind of fasting you do won't get your prayers off the ground. Do you think this is the kind of fast day I'm after? A day to show humility? To put on a pious long face and parade around solemnly in black? Do you call that fasting? A fast day I, God, would like so you're reading here, he said in verse 2 again, yet you seek me daily, and it look good on the outside. They seek in God daily. They delight to know his ways. Yes, they to, to the other nations, they look like they are in one with God. Yes, Lord, and, and, and a nation that do righteousness and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They appeared like that. They acts of me, the ordinances of justice. They delight in approaching the God, all of that they was doing sounded good, but it was for external show. And they wonder why God wasn't listening to them in their fast. And, and this is what the Lord gave to me. He's dropped this word like I'm talking to you. He said, God don't want a dead fast. They was fasting, but they wondered why God seemed to not hurt their prayers. I'm going to read this out the Amplified Bible and we're going to get down to it. Verse 2. Yet they seek, inquire for, and require me daily and delight externally to know my ways. As if they were in reality a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to me in visible ways. Why have we fasted, they say, and you do not see it? Why have we afflicted ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, O Israel, on the day of your fast, when you should be grieving for your sins. You find profit in your business. And instead of stopping all work, as the law implies you, your workmen should do. You exhort from your hired servants a full amount of labor. God said they was fasting, but it wasn't effective fast. And the Lord spoke to me. He said a lot of people's fasting, but it's not effective. The problem the Lord said the people is fasting, but a lot of folks just ain't doing it right. God doesn't want us fasting. Fasting without the effects of supernatural change in our spiritual condition. You know, you're wasting your time fasting if it did not change your spiritual condition. If your fast did not change you on the inside, then you fasted for nothing. What? And I heard this question. He said, Why is people fasting but but they are not seeing a change in their attitude. Why is people fasting, but they're still bound to sin? Why is people fasting, but they're still yoked to ungodliness? Why is people fasting, but they are yoked to, they still yoked to ungodly soul ties? Why is people fasting, and they are still oppressed with depression? Why is people fasting, but they still have 
broken they still have not broken from crippling habits and addictions people is fasting and wondering did God acknowledge them in their fasting because they are not seeing any results so they came off the fast they said Lord I fasted but I'm not seeing no results but I heard the Lord said to me he said the problem is the bodies was more involved in the fast than their souls were okay why didn't I get the effects that the Bible promises? He said their bodies was more involved with it than their souls. What do you mean? Well, they went without food for a period of time, but they didn't deny it. They did not deny internet. They didn't deny TV. They didn't deny entertainment in the process of the fast. The Lord said, I don't want to fast without your soul being infected or affected by it. He said, they've been fasting, but they have not given me everything of them. They gave me their bodies, but they didn't give me their minds. He said, they're fasting and still on internet. They're fasting and still texting folk. They're fasting and still on Facebook. They're fasting and still watching movies. And God said, they got the form of the fast down. Ah, but they don't have the soul involved in it. And so when they come off the fast, they're asking God, well, I fasted. I, I did what you told me to do. I fasted at the pastor said fast but notice you fasted because the pastor told you but your soul really wasn't involved in it you went through the motions you went without eating but because you didn't want to do it you still had your fun while you weren't eating and God is saying that is what you call a dead fast now nobody should be looking at their Bibles if you're listening you should be looking at that me because that's how you're going to get deliverance are uh, y'all hearing me He said, look, they look like my people. They assembled around. They came to the assembly. They look like they was holy people. The neighbors see them carrying Bibles down the stairs. The neighbors see them in their three-piece suits going to church. They look holy. Amen. Folks on the job see them not eating. But God said at the same time, he said they are not doing it right. He said that's why they still that's why they still got in godless soul ties they have not been broken. Because when you are fasting right, it's a demon in that soul that will have to come out of you. Let me tell you, whatever demons right in your soul gotta come out when you fast right. Oh, oh y'all hear me now. You can't stay connected to something that's not like God or something that God been telling you to disconnect from. Oh God, you can't stay so by fasting it, it, it destroys the yoke when you fast right. When you fast right, habits break, addictions break, pornography break, perversion break. You can't tell me you fasted right and you still bow with perversion. You, let me tell you, yes, you fasted, but it was a dead fast. It's a dead fast. We fasted as a church, but when the fast is over, nobody changed. Ain't too many people change. You know why? They went through the motion. Their bodies was involved in it, but their soul wasn't involved with God. Their souls were still involved with the homeboys and homegirls and what's on the TV. Their soul was still involved with what's on the YouTube. Oh, y'all better hear me, y'all. They made their soul, Lord. I told the Lord, I said, God, teach me this year. Teach me how to fast to get your attention. Lord, I don't want to go through a ritual or a motion or through a ceremony. God, show me how to fast to get your attention. And the Lord told me, he said, the way you fast to get my attention, you got to relieve yourself of all self pleasure in a fast. Anything that brings you pleasure, you got to get rid of it. Lord, I cry quiet. If it's a TV, get rid of it. If it's juice, get rid of it. Y'all got quote. God 
said, I don't want nothing to satisfy your flesh. He said, the way you know you are afflicting your soul, you are miserable, you are, you, you going through, you're heavy, you dry. Lord, you better hear me. You dry from entertainment. You dry from self. You dry. Lord, you seeking God with everything you got. Oh, y'all better hear what I'm saying. You are abstaining from this. You are abstaining from that. Anything that's pleasurable, you are getting away from it. You know what I just heard, heard in the spirit? He said one of the reasons why folks is not effective because they're pleasing themselves on their fast. He said they're finding pleasure on a fast. You, you don't ease the pain up by watching TV. I got to take a break. I can't stay. No, 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 no. No, you don't. You want to you wanna fast at work. You got to get out there. Listen, close friends. Person, the only person I'm close to is my wife or my son. But when I'm on a consecration fast, you ain't gonna know it. We ain't finna team up. No, y'all got quiet. Ain't no team up here. Listen with, with my honey here. Y'all better hear me. We ain't finna team up. You ain't got you. Listen, I'm fast today. You gonna fast together. We gonna fast together. Let me tell you something. That's pleasurable. Oh, y'all got quiet here now. Cause when I need somebody to talk to, I can talk to you. God said, No, I want that pleasure gone. He said, When you fast, I want you to feel this fast. I, I want you to feel that pain. I want you to feel that affliction in your soul. Said the Lord. How we they, they they fasting but it's a dead fast because they still coming out heavy oppressed still want to backslide still still on you know the mind still not made up that fast didn't work because you didn't work it right see when you fast you not only abstain from food you abstain from you Totally. Y'all don't like that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not a rebuke, it's an encouragement. I'm trying to encourage you and I'm trying to teach you how to fast the right God told me. He told me. He said, no form of pleasure coming from you. If you get any satisfaction, is I relieve you for a while. I relieve you from the pain for a while. I relieve you from the from the stomach grass. I relieve you from the pangs in your stomach. I give you pleasure. Let me pleasure you. Let me strengthen you. When you're weak, don't try to flip an artificial to try to ease the pain. That's what you call afflicting your soul. Y'all, he asked the question to the Lord. Why do we fast and you don't look our way? They asked him. We fasted. Why don't you look our way? Why do we harm ourselves and you don't even notice? So they get the, they got start getting discouraged because God wasn't moving. He wasn't answering. He wasn't answering. Because they had a dead fast. Because when you got a good old butt kicking fast. What it starts with, it don't start with your body. It starts cleansing your soul. God said you control your body by not eating. I got the soul if you give it to me. If you give your soul to prayer, you give your soul to the word. God said I will afflict that. I will take out of you what shouldn't be inside of you. If you give me the soul, you got the body. I, listen, I help you surrender to your flesh, but let me have that soul. This spend some hours on top of hours eating my word. My God, let my word get inside the soul and start cleansing you. Oh God, a ways that you know it's not like God, Lord. But tell you something, it's a dangerous thing to go on a long fast and then revert back to the stuff you came out of or revert back 
you the same spirits that you came. Y'all better hear me. It's dangerous to do that. You're entering down dangerous territories when you are fasting like that. And then you didn't do no follow up after that. Let me tell you, you don't start no long fast and then stop later on. You got to continue doing it. The more you fast, the more you should be fasting. You don't take no break from it. You just tap into a realm now. You can't go back out that realm. Let me tell you something. You're going back to demons huh, that you fought before you got there. And this time, them demons going to make sure you don't get back to where you was before you broke through from that long fast and ass time. God said, it's time to stop being babies. Huh? It's time to hurt and labor before God for your deliverance. Hallelujah. You're not going to get it through tweakers and donuts. Huh? I can't see nobody here. You're going to get it through hardcore laying on your face huh? and tell the Lord, you're killing me. God, you're killing me. God said, that's what I want. Huh? I want to hear you say you're killing me because I am killing stuff out of your soul, said the Lord. The motions. Going through the motions. Of, going through the motions. Because if there's no change been produced, you're going to be asking like they are, God, did you look, did you look our way? Lord, why didn't you respond? As God said, you didn't add your soul to it. There was a disconnection between me and your soul. Why you try to connect your body without your soul? He said, I need your body with your soul in this consecration. I need to burn out of you everything that needs to be burned. Every demon that's hiding in your soul going to come out through fasting. I promise you it will. When you start seeking God, you're going to need this prayer line. Y'all, let me tell you, your prayer line going to be on your face through your suffering. Every time you push that plate back, something has been, something has happening for you. Oh, oh y'all, hear what I'm talking about? Shut though. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you, Americans in the body of Christ is gaining weight. The reason they gaining weight because they ain't fasting. And all kinds of sickness is coming upon our bodies because we're not fasting. He just said your heart should spring forth speedily when you go through a dying process of fasting. And then one of the problems is a lot of us haven't fasted to the level where our souls been affected. We'll fast 24 hours and feel like we've done something. But God said that didn't benefit you. What you need, the deliverance you need is longer than that. You need to go longer than that. The stuff you're dealing with, you need to go longer than 24. Or if you can't do it straight, you need to do at least a, a, a three weeks of partial fasting or something. Because it's stuff in your soul got to come out. Y'all better hear me. Yes, Lord. And so they, 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 they was more, their they, they bodies was involved without eating. But 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 they, they did not their soul Come on, men of God. Come on. because they was too involved in entertainment, right, internet, Come on, yep. Come on, TV, God. in the process yep. of a fast. Wow. Y'all better hear me. He said you found pleasure. That's what it said, didn't it? It, it said you found you found pleasure. In the day of your fast. We said, Wherefore have we fasted? Say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our souls, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. I know what he told me. I'm sharing it with you. He said, They fast longer than they pray. No quality time in prayer on a fast, Come on, man, God. and we're wondering why it's not producing the change that it's supposed to produce. Fasting is a time of, of, of giving your body a time out so your spirit, the Holy Ghost in your spirit, could work deliverance out that soul. But how? It's the spirit of God going to work out in us, work out of us, that's in us when we busy in pleasure. Because the problem is, first lady, the reason why a lot of folks is not feeling the pain in the fast, because the pleasure is taking the, the pleasure is taking their minds off of it. Yep. Right, 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 right. 
You want to be delivered? You want to go to the next level? You want yokes destroyed? You got to go through the pain of affliction of your soul. And if it said that and it's not happening, what's going on? Y'all better hear me now. He said the bottom line is on your fast, you, you, it's a damn prophet. It's a day of profit. I ain't got no business going out. Right, man of God. Come on, man of God. On a day I know I'm off work and I'm fasting. Right. Right. Taking care of bills and business. That's a day of affliction. Right. Now I understand we got things to do, but at least on one of them days of your fast or two. You shut in. I'm drawing closer to God. Y'all, y'all better hear me. Just like it took time to draw away from God through backsliding and through weakness, through all kinds of stuff, it's going to take time to draw back near to God. Oh, y'all better hear me. And see, they were more involved with the physical motion of the fast, but they didn't afflict their souls with travailing prayer. They didn't afflict their souls with diligent labor in the word of God. Y'all, when you're fasting, you are partaking. You see, you, you don't just stop eating and don't go to a different level of food. You don't push food back. From, you, don't, you don't stop feeding your body without replacing it with something else. With this, this. Now, what's happening, you're shutting your body down and you're opening your spirit up to eat. The word of God. Y'all. Y'all. The Lord showed me. He said to me, He said, I need all of your soul involved in this consecration. If it's just 12 hours, if it's just 24 hours, if it's just three days, I need all of you. It's going to, listen, when, when all of you is involved, you're going to feel like you're missing your family. That's how you know you're involved. They live in the same house with you, but you're going to feel like, man, it's all in a while. That means it's working. Yeah, that's how you know. You know why? It's a death walk. You know what the word death means? Separate. Death means to be separate. Your body die, your spirit separates from your body. Separate. So when you are doing it right, you're not hanging around with everybody at the dinner table. You're not hanging around with the, with the, with the family when they come over and everybody's sitting around talking. There is a separation. Why? Because I'm not just separated. This is for religious purpose. I'm just sanctified. No, I'm separated to feed my spirit. That's how you know it is a, 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 a fast that God is requiring. It's because you feel distant and they miss you too. But if nobody missing you, <laughs> you ain't missing nobody. It ain't working. Because it's a fast for you for a season. Afflicted my soul. I'm afflicted my soul. Y'all, I'm told God this year I'm getting everything. Because I want to find out how it all work. <laughs> this is how it works. This is how it works. I, I want those greater blessings. I want I, I want to see them make. I want to see opportunities manifest themselves. And so God said, before I manifest it to you, I got to see how bad you really want it. The way I know how bad you really want it, the way I, the way I know how bad you really want it, is you badly not want you to get him. You, you, you're, you're not, listen, you, you're saying, listen, I'm shutting me down. 
I want what you have more than what I want. God, I want to eat. Yes, I'm hungry, but I want what you got more than that's on that plate. Y'all better hear me. God said your sacrifice is showing me how bad you really want deliverance. What are you willing to give up on your fast than just your food? Because people that died don't eat food. So when you say a spiritual fast, you just don't eat. You not only don't eat food, but you are involved in the spiritual side of you. The Lord said, why are they still bound and yoked up after they came off the long fast? He said, because they gave me a dead one. What killed it was the pleasure. The, what killed it was the pleasure they found in the process of the fasting. Y'all better give God some praise. I know what I'm talking about. How do you know it didn't work? While they fasted, they were still mean. They were still argumentative. They were still combative. While they was fasting. Because when is a real fast and you're doing it right, you have no strength to argue. You don't feel like being strifeful and vengeful. Because your body is so weak. You are afflicted too. You are too afflicted, brother. To argue with anybody. I'm just too afflicted. Okay, you win. God said, oh, it's working now. Because I know how you were. You never say you win. That's what I'm trying to get to. Yeah. For you to say, okay, whatever, God said, it's working. Can I, am I right? Yes, on a fast, you can get irritable. You can get uncomfortable. You can't hardly sleep. But that's the affliction part. See, a fast is what you promised to God. I promise to give you me. And you got to keep your promise no matter what the pain is, no matter what the suffering is. I made a vow to you. I am going to do these three days. I'm going to do these two days. or Whatever you want. God put in your spirit. And when you vow that, God said, all I'm looking for is the best from you. I want you to give me more of you than you ever have given me before. I'm asking you to get up early to pray and go to bed before you go to night. In bed at night, pray. I want you to get up in the wee hours and pray. I want more of you. I, I, listen, I, I, I got to get you. I got to get more of you. All right. See, I, I have to fast to afflict myself because I got to have my spirit strong. Why? Because of the demons that's fighting me. I, I gotta, my spirit got to be able to make intercession without static. I, my spirit got to intercede to God without any pleasure interfering with it. Y'all better hear me. See, the spirit making intercession for the saints. Well, we're groaning and moaning that we can't understand. My God, we don't know what we shall always pray, but the Holy Ghost know what to pray. And so I got to be in a place where my spirit is, is, a, is contacting God. Lord have mercy. See, the problem is before you fasted, you weren't making connection like you should. You was hidden and missing because it was too much flesh. But when you start dying to you, now your spirit is, is gaining ascendancy. Now when you pray, your voice is heard because there's no flesh in the way. The only way there's no flesh in the way of your fast is there been no pleasure in it. Oh, y'all better hear me. So when you get down to pray, God said, now I can talk to spirit to spirit. I'm not talking to flesh and spirit. I'm talking to spirit and spirit. Because that flesh is dead. Now when he pray, it's the spirit that's prayed out of it. And I can connect. I can do something for them that they never thought I would do for Y'all better come on. It's, see, when you're fasting and you're praying, your prayers is amplified. Y'all don't understand that. Your prayers now is more effective than it was before you wasn't fasting. 
<laughs> oh, better hear me. You know, when you're putting your body under, your spirit is rising to the occasion. You're more keen. You're more sensitive. Your sense is more keen. You can hear God talk. You can hear him speak. Amen. More clear. And you can pray with a contact. You got a contact with God. But you, listen, you break that contact on a fast with TV. Y'all, the Lord said this kind of fast I've chosen. It's not for the boys. It's for the men. In the spirit. Ain't for no weaklings. If you're going to fast three days, let's not make an excuse. It's hard. It's supposed to be. But it works. Y'all. That's why preachers, we got to fast. Pastors and ministers and intercessors. That's gotta, we got to fast. We're supposed to be the mouthpiece of God. And, and, and what my fast does, it, it breaks any common ground that I ungodly common. Y'all better hear me. It, it breaks it. And what it does, it puts me on a level where I can see you. Because it's through the soul we connect it. But when I rise in the spirit, I see, oh, and that's what I've been connected to. She had that in her. I didn't see it until I started fast. I didn't know they were bound with them kind of lust until we, I started fast. I've been yoked to that, and guess what? God said they rubbed in on you, too. Because what you be around is what rub off on you. You're around somebody all day, they rub off on you, and you don't even know it. And when you start fasting, God starts showing you it's some stuff been rubbed on your soul that you didn't even know about. It Lord is quiet here. So what you're doing now through a fast, not only you delivering you from you, but you deliver God's delivering you from somebody else that rubbed on you. So yeah. it, it, it breaks off of you. Ungodly soul ties and yokes. That's why when you come out that world and you get saved, you got to fast for God to pour all the ungodly worldliness out of you. You got to ask God to flush you out. Flush out of me ungodliness. Flush out of me soul ties. And I've been bound. Put it under the blood. But Lord, I, I know it's under the blood, but let me see the manifestation of the blood cleansing. Let me see it in reality. Because we so quick to say it's under the blood, but we don't see no deliverance. We, are, we keep saying it's under the blood, but there's no deliverance. It's still in your soul, baby. And that stuff got to come out through a hardcore affliction. Some of this stuff got to come out of you through you yielding yourself before God and saying, Lord, I'm uncomfortable, but I know you're going to deliver me. I know you're going to bring this out of me. The Lord said, tell the people, stop loving the form of fasting more than you love the power of it. Those folks so quick to say, I fasted. I fasted. I fasted. Because when you, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because when you really fasted, what effects? You ain't for the boast about it. Because that fasting have humbled you to the point. Woo! That's how I know you ain't fasted right. You two skipping, he skip. I fasted. I fasted. I, I fasted three days, y'all. No. I'm fasting just to get a position in the church. I'm fasting just to let me tell you something. If you fasting to work in the church, then your fasting ain't legit. Your fasting should be for God to work on you, not to work in the church. How you gonna work on somebody else that you ain't you need work? Y'all can't hear nobody. Hey, he said they fasting for their voices to be heard on high. That's what it said. They fasting for external 
uh, uh, um, applause. Right. Fasting for external attention. You fasting for the wrong reason. You fasting because your prayers gonna be strong. So when I lay hands, they can just jerk and fall. You got the wrong reason to fast, baby. You need to fast because you got the wrong motives. Fast so you get the right motives. Fast until God deliver you. Fast so your mind change. Your mindset is changed. Fast to the one godly desires. Leave your body. Fast until your mouth and stop running like okay. Fast until Amen. God gets the control of you. Come on, man of God. That's the reason we're fast, man of God. Come on. Y'all better hear me here. Come on, preacher. We ain't fasting to be more to be be seen. Right, man of God. Right, man of God. I'm fasting because I want God to break things in me that will hinder the blessings in my life. Said I, he said, I got this for them. I got that for them. I got this and that. But they ain't dead enough for me to give it. If I give them this opportunity, if they walk in this opportunity fleshly, they're going to mess it up. Because babies is not ready for Ferraris and Cadillacs. And they, they're not ready. Y'all quiet. See, you gotta be get you gotta get prepared and position for what God's about to do. He ain't gonna just fall on you. You gotta I told y'all beginning of the year, I'm gonna tell y'all all year, he got blessings and favor, they ain't for free. These things gonna come with a price. Y'all better hear me. You, you got you got a part to do. People want this deliverance, but don't wanna do nothing. They don't want to do anything. They don't want to do anything. The Bible said we are co-laborers with Christ. I'm work with him. He worked with me. We work together. What are you willing to give up? Are y'all hearing me? What are you willing to give up? It's never a it's never a convenient time to fast. If they tell you or they lying, because they may tell you why it's a convenient for them, because they find a pledge in it. Because when you got a pledgeless fast, it's never convenient. It's never convenient. It's never, it never feel, it don't feel good to fast, y'all. To the flesh it doesn't. But when God chooses, and you are of God, some of your spirits say, Lord, I, okay, I thank you for this one. I don't know about y'all, I might, I, might sound, I might sound crazy, but I get joy. When I know I got to go on a long one, but at the same time I get sad. The spirit get happy. But the, when I start thinking about, oh, God. You better think yourself happy. See, sometimes a lot of us start out to fast. I can do this thing, yeah. First day go through, oh, yeah. I'm doing this thing, God. But the next day, oh, oh, yeah, oh, Now, God said, now, watch this. I'm taking the emotion out of it. Watch this. I'm going to say something. The Lord said, in the fast, I'm going to take the emotion out of it to show you where your addiction is. Because if you high on emotion, you can't see what the addiction is. And God said, the number one addiction I'm going to show you after the emotions is gone is how addicted to food you are. And being addicted to food can lead to other addictions. He said, 
said, I'm trying to get you to a place where you lose an unhealthy relationship with food. Oh, he said, I'm trying to show you how, how much food got you bound. Because when you say no to it, your flesh going to kick a fat because you're so used to feeding it like you're feeding on drugs. Y'all better hear me. You got to have it. That's what a fast do. It show you how bound the food you are. It show you what you're really needing your need to more. We could be bowing the food more than we bow to God. When food say eat, when I better say eat, we say yes. When God say pray, we say no. And show you how bound we are to food. So you get a hunger pain, you go eat. So you feel that snack rising up, you go find something to snack on. But when that craving of prey come, we, we we fight with it, we we wrestle with it. It's because God is showing you food move you faster than me. I gotta get you to a place where you kill that drive and put me first. I can't hear no, and then you'll see blessing on top of blessing. Saith the Lord. He going to show you. He going to show you. Listen, listen. He going to show you that you're not coming to me to lift the burden. But you're coming to food to lift the burden. You're coming to food to ease how you feel for the moment. Because it tastes so good you ain't thinking about what you're going through because you're eating emotionally. God said, I'm going to show you where your God really is, your belly. Show you how emotional and addicted you are to food. Y'all had something totally different tonight than this. The Lord said to me, I hear you, Lord. I, he, he speak quick. He said, The reason why they still got old all because they ain't poured out, ain't poured it out through consecration. For me to put fresh oil in. They still got oil from last year. They still got an anointing from last year. They still got an anointing from years, years ago. Because they never poured out through consecration. They never broke the veil with just the flesh to, come, to pour out that old stuff. So I could put some new stuff in. God said, This year, you need a fresh oil. You need a fresh anointing. You need some fresh fire. Die to you. Die. Flesh open, huh? let that old oil pour out, and let me give you a raw change. Huh? Shut the light. Wonder why we can't move like we stood in the spirit while we slower because your all ain't been changed. God ain't put nothing fresh, that's right. All that dirt and mug and smug and all that stuff is in our spirits. Attitudes and behaviors and feelings and mood and mindsets. God said, instead of the old wall, He said, "You let me put some old, some new wall in you." This is not gonna get through all through your soul. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna spread all through your soul. And it's going to clean out what the anointing do. It destroy the yoke. When this anointing come in, it's going to go through all th through your soul to destroy every yoke that Satan have put up there inside of you. The Lord is saying, he said, when you really want to, when you really want one of these kind of fast, uh -huh. you ain't for to consider this. You're going to do it. Yeah. Ain't no thinking about, um, yeah. you know. Yeah. <sighs> no. When you know you got some crippling habits, yep. God, that's crippling you up. You know you got worldliness inside of you, fleshliness and lust and all this stuff that's inside of you. You know it's time for an affliction of the soul. It's time to lay out before God lay longer before you, longer than you ever have laid. You fast longer than you ever have fasted, uh, permitting your physical condition. Uh, are y'all hearing me here? I, I gotta lay there a longer time than this because when I get up in this season and when you see me 
walking in my blessings. I can't say it was nobody but the Lord that done it. Hallelujah. I just moved out there. Watch this. Everybody watch this. Fasting don't move God. Fasting moves you. Fasting put you in a position for God to give you what you're supposed to have. Oh, y'all better commit fasting. I can't manipulate God. I can't try y'all got quiet here. Oh, fasting puts me in a position to say, God, I've been out the way. I've been over here. I should be there. Let me get over here and wait right here so that blessing is hitting me straight on. Y'all better hear me. Are you right in the way of your blessing? Is it coming straight? See, it's coming this way, but someone was way over here and it's passing you by. But God said, I'm coming back the other way. I need you to position yourself. Ah, when you in the way, I will overtake you with blessing. Get in your position. Get in position. The blessings ain't going to adjust for you. God ain't going to adjust for us. So I need you to get in place. I need you to be in place. Because you ain't preaching on me. You don't supposed to be in place. Because you ain't even working the prayer line on me. You don't supposed to be in place. Because you got to usher at the door. Some traveling minister. God said, listen, you got your own blessing. Your blessing is yours. What's mine is mine. And I never know till I get in place. Y'all better go talk to me. Shut up. Glory. I got to get in place. Come on, preacher. That's right, man. It's the trick of the enemy. It's to make you feel like you're too sick to fast. When God told you to do it. Yeah, when you fast, not if. See, it's an in season. I mean, I got to do when I feel good. When I determined to fast, I told the Lord if I even caught the flu through it. I'm fasting through the flu. Y'all quiet. Y'all don't have to like me. See, I just got that endurance. Brother, you don't have to leave. You finna leave out? Don't leave out. Come on in. Now, come on. Y'all, when, when, when we're preaching, don't leave out. If you ain't got what you have, don't worry about it. Come on, somebody. I need you to stay and listen. Uh, yo, what was I saying? Come on, man of God. When you fast? When you fast? Thank you. See, but that's, that's not for everybody. Right? Because some folks don't make sense. But when you're hungry. You know what I hear the Lord saying? The problem is not, the problem is not that folks don't want to do it. The problem is they're too lazy to do it. Y'all got quiet. <laughs> That's the problem. They don't want to do it because they know it's going to require some energy. It's going to require some work. <laughs> that cuss word now. You want your prayers to be more effective? Die without pleasure. And not only am I fasting because I need more, but I'm fasting because I know where I'm going. I'm not going to let the time come, then fast. I got to be ready before it comes. Before that door open, I already got to be consecrated. I already got to be prayed up. Who knows if the, the call come tonight, I need you tomorrow. And y'all quiet, come on. <laughs> See, you, I'm already fresh. For the next, that's fresh oil. And bottle been full of fresh oil. The Lord said, new beginning, I want to put some freshness in you. He said, I want to I want to take all that old stuff out of you from last year. All that old stuff that contaminated your spirit. All that old stuff that messed with you last year. God said, it's debris. I got to get it out you. Let me refine you. Stay on your face before me. Push your plate. If you're going to give me 12, give me a good 12, the Lord said. Give me a good solid 12 hour. If it's going to be 10, give me a good solid 10 hour. I need something from you, said the Lord. 
Afflict your soul. Not just your body. Because God is a spirit. He said a God chosen fast. So when it, when if God's a spirit, then he's after your spirit when he chose to fast. God is a spirit. And if he chose it, he wants something from your spirit. He's going to fast, fast in spirit and truth. That means give it all you got. You got to be in such of a place where you're so weak where I know to be around anybody else, I'm, a, I'm not going to be right. Watch this. So I need to be before God that understands me. Uh -huh. <laughs> then fast it 40 days so he understands where I'm coming from. For I have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of my infirmities. Ooh, boy. Oh, all points with temper. That's where we are. But yet without sin. So I can talk to him. He understands what y'all understand. I know how it feel to go without, but I, I'm, I'm strengthening you. Come on, push through it. I told y'all, you got demonic angels saying eat. But God, the angels saying keep going. Keep going. Because I'm saying glory. Watch this. Some of the angels are saying if you keep going, you give me a chance to come minister to you. If you keep going, God just might speak to me to come down to give you some strength. Man of God. Man of God. You want to all of a sudden not to. I've been fasting this long. I got some strength. You don't know. Something just came to your room. And God said, that's what he said. He was, he was strengthened in the wilderness. Jesus was strengthened in the wilderness. He was strengthened in the garden of Gethsemane. He was strengthened by an angel. God said, the angel said, give me the opportunity to come and strengthen you. Don't you tap out now. I don't want to sign it. I got to come say about you. He's not going to send you on a fast he's chosen for it to break you. Right. Were you hospitalized? And wow. if, if I chose it, I don't choose in wrath. I choose in grace for my people. I give you the grace to do it. If I assigned it for you, I have graced you. People look at you and wonder, how did you go that long, baby? Listen, it was grace. It wasn't, listen, in my flesh, I couldn't do this. It was his empowerment. The Lord said, some of y'all, he said, I've been speaking to some of y'all about just one day you won't do it. I know I hear. He said, I'm just calling one day from you. It's not that you can't. It's just that you won't. Why is it a fight? God said, why do you fight with 24 hours? Y'all don't like me tonight. Why are you fighting with it? How bad do you really want this? Y'all, let me, I'm trying to get, I'm, I'm almost done when I get through. You know, I ain't quite done. So listen. He said, he said, they, while, they, while they fasted, they still was mean. They still was argumentative. Uh -huh. <laughs> they still combative. How you fast and y'all got hell in your house like that? Boy, oh, yeah. watch this. Y'all ain't gonna like this one. Married folk. How you fast and still want sex? Because when you really fasted right, you don't want no sex. You don't want no pleasure like y'all got quiet. Oh, let me go, because I, I just dropped in my spirit like lightning. How you still sexy? How? Now, I, I'm serious. The Bible said if you're going to fast, he said, look, get with your mate. Let them know that you fasting so Satan won't tempt you. Why are you being tempted? Because somewhere communication ain't been wrong first. 
Ain't the right communication first. You then sat down and said, listen, we fa I'm fasting for a couple of days. And, and see when the communication right, sin can't break through that barrier. But somebody ain't fasting right because you want sex in the middle of a fast. That should be the last thing on your mind is sex. I want God. All right. Yeah, let me get on because uh, you ain't afflicted nothing by wanting sex. How your mind on that? I mean, how, how, really? <laughs> how you thinking about sex and your mind's on God? You know what that's showing you? You really got a fat because you got a perverted demon. All right. You did it with perversion. And you either fast that thought, it's gone. Pray until it's gone. Y'all got quiet on the preacher. Y'all, I'm going to show you how bad you are. And then when you don't get the sex, you get combative. I got advice for you. I got two words for you. Just eat. Because if God our food make you that vicious, go eat. Scripture ain't going to work with for you, baby. You got to kill that flush. Get flesh. Flush. I know when it's a real fast. When it's a real fast, you're not trying to have no sex. You have sex on your fun time with your mate. But it's, watch this. See, I, I fast because I got to go to war. Soldiers don't have sex in war. They fighting for a cause. Ain't no time for that. That's right. You busy fighting, defending your country. So you out on alert looking. You are. How you got a gun? Oh, man. I wonder what she got on tonight. The enemy right there looking. Snipe about to snipe you. Move, move. He got a sniper. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, you dead, man. I wonder if she wearing that new birthday suit I bought for her. On the army? In the army? You're going to get us all killed. You're going to get us all killed. Am I right? Am I lying? Am I lying? When it's one of them hardcore fasts, you really don't want to be touched. You just so, oh, I'm just not comfortable. I can't sleep. You aggravated. You irritated. You cold. How you hot? How you hot? I mean, hot, hot. And you won't be freezing. Can I get a witness of a new beginning? <laughs> Lord said to me to tell you, don't fall so in love with the fasting and not in love with the affliction of it. <laughs> because a fast is not a fast without the affliction. It's a, it's a self-imposed affliction. And the greater your office, the greater your level of consecration. Y'all quiet on me here. You know, I heard the Lord saying to me, while a lot of preachers are sick, while a lot of preachers are sick, they're not, they, they are staying stuck on a level they should have been passed. They have not risen above that level of affliction. Y'all quiet. But when you start ascending higher, you'll start, you'll, you'll start feeling certain spirits let you go. Because it's so far they can go. So you got different demonic spirits like you got different birds. See, the higher you go, certain birds can't go high as an eagle. 
because of the wind span. They can't breathe altitude. Certain demons can't go that high because of the altitude. The higher you go, certain demons can't get there because your altitude on the ground. Y'all got quiet. That's why you're still dealing with the same demons because you have not outgrew your altitude. Y'all quiet over here.